The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're going to take a look at what we usually do. We're going to go across the pond over to Germany and take a look at the German DAX. Uh, we're going to look at it here microscopically. As you can see here, over the past uh, four or five weeks, we've been in this really tight trading range, bouncing up against the 786 on the upsides and 618s on the downside. But if we go just a little bit uh, farther out, and we're going to do that right now, we're going to switch and go to the um, the daily chart here in the German DAX going back to right after Brexit. You can see we had that tremendous drop that was the – best buying opportunity since the crash of uh, 1989. Not quite that dramatic. But anyway, it made that low uh, right at uh, right after the uh, Brexit thing. And then if you look at what happened, we went up and made a perfect ABCD pattern at the 382 uh, just about 10 days ago. Last week, we pulled back exactly to a 61% retracement. We were doing that, the same thing, uh, you know, with the S&P, if you'll recall. And what I'm trying to emphasize here is we've got a potential here for a very high level consolidation that's been going on for the past several months and since this consolidation has been um, you know started by the low that we made uh, back on um, October 1st with the 382 retracement which was a perfect ABCD leg uh, th this has potential for really bullishness folks uh, it doesn't take very much uh, to get this market moving strongly to the upside. Now, whether that will have anything to do with our market or not, but our market is uh, not too too much different. We've been in this very, very tight trading range for quite some time also. And uh, last night, you know, we really didn't do very much. We were off just a tiny bit in stock starting Sunday night. If you'll take a look here uh, at the NASDAQ, you'll notice here that it just pulled back to a 61% retracement. You know, it didn't do anything, uh, you know, very dramatically at all. Uh, we had uh, pretty much the exact same thing happening with the E-mini S&P that we'll take a look at right now. Uh, so those are the lows that you want to focus on, which would be 2118 uh, in the S&P. And the corresponding low in the NASDAQ would be the overnight low that we had because they were right at the 61% retracements. Now the $64 question, where in the heck do we go from here? Uh, the only thing that I can use, and remember, uh, we had some very interesting uh, guests uh, last week. Uh, we had Bill Meridian, of course. Then we had Shane Smullyan uh, on Friday, and he talked about the relationship of Yellen and the Fed. And, you know, there's, a, there's definitely, you know, uh, Donald Trump has thrown down the gauntlet to the Fed saying that if he gets elected, Yellen is out. So she's fighting for her job, and it's one of the most important jobs in the world. So I don't think she's going to do anything to uh, uh, shake the uh, tree as far as uh, doing anything dramatic between now uh, and the election, which is only 22 days away. So we're probably going to be in this really tight trading range, you know, for some time. But we'll we'll just have to uh, you know let the market tell us what it's going to do. What I wanted to, I got so many emails over the weekend, so many, you know, five, that's a lot. <laughs> we'll take a look here uh, at the Bradley model. I want to discuss it a little bit because sometimes we put too much emphasis on it, but it does a really good job, folks. If you if you stop and think this thing predicts out, you know, it can go out hundreds of years because it's just looking, you know, at major cycles. What what Donald Bradley did was he did a, a wrote a little book in 1947 that described what the market was going to do in 1946, and he published it. He did it ahead of time, so it was not, you know, in retrospect. But the book was uh, written by uh, or published by Llewellyn Publications out of, I believe, it was Detroit at the time, and it was sold for the astronomical price of four dollars. So that was a lot of money uh, back in 1947 and 48. So. 
What he discovered is that the, he was using the work of a doctor from Yale, the Dr. Barr, B-A-R-R, who gave weights to all of the planetary uh, pairs. In other words, if you have the moon uh, that is conjunct at zero degrees you know, to Mercury, that has either a positive or negative effect. And he gave those, he went through all the planets, and he gave them either positive or negative biases based on the astrophysics of what they were discovering at Yale. And this is you know, true to this day, that they either have a positive or negative uh, energy effect. And so what, what Bradley did was he, he put these into a siderograph, which is nothing more more than the red line that you're seeing here. This is the inversion of this. And you don't know, sometimes it'll invert, sometimes it'll stay the same. That's why we could be looking at a major bottom here, because if you inverted this red line, you would be looking at an inverted pattern. But the problem with that is that means everything since uh, April would be totally out of whack. In other words, it didn't fit. So what we have to do is we have to match a pattern, which what we think is a pattern, to, you know, to where we are right now. And as you can see on this Dow Jones, we have the same triangle pattern you know, that we're seeing in the uh, S&P. But we're not seeing that in the NASDAQ. You know, the NASDAQ had that huge ABCD pattern up at that 4,900 level. And then we broke all the way down to uh, 48, uh, I believe, 48.47. And, you know, we rallied back about 50 handles uh, from that. So uh, we're, we're in a really tight trading range here, it looks like. And we could stay this way, you know, for quite some time. What I'm trying to emphasize here is that, that even though where we are, you'll notice that this red line, which has been going almost nearly perfectly since the Brexit thing, uh, has, is showing that we are heading down. Uh, all the way into or the early part of 2017. I don't know if it means anything as far as who's going to be elected or what. I've, frankly, I've you know been on this planet, this is my eighth decade, and frankly, I, I can never remember, wait, no, seventh decade, sorry about that. Uh, I can never remember uh, an election like this. And, uh, you know, this has just been absolutely, it's, it's a comical, which is, which, which is absolutely perfect for the... Um, for the news stations, because they, they are drawing in people, uh, you know, like they never have before. This is like the O.J. Simpson trial or something like that. I mean, this is really quite, uh, really quite amazing. So this is, uh, even though everybody complains about, you know, rigging or whatever it happens to be, they're getting the readership, and that's what that's what they get because they like to sell ads, and that's what it's all about. Anyway. And this is what we're looking at here in the Bradley model. So we've got a possibility here of breaking out either way. The way I would handle this, folks, is to try to let the market to tell you what it wants to do. If we get below 17,800 in the Dow, which is 330 points from where we are right now, I would say you would have to say that this, this model is working really well and we're probably going to be down for the next six or seven months. Remember, we haven't had any really serious corrections since 2011. We've had some breaks, but we've never had anything really super serious. So, and this usually we do get that. So, and the VIX index is also telling us that we're in an area where, you know, something crazy could could happen here. So, these are the things that we have to look at, uh, you know, coming in. The reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is, is because of the uh, fact that there's about, I think there's three or four of these uh, charts that are out there showing uh, the potential crash coming, uh, you know, any time now in the market. And that's a very, uh, it's very uh, dangerous to, to think that that could happen. Even though it could, and you can profit from it, it's dangerous to think that way. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS 
has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and we were talking uh, a little bit uh, about, uh, you know, the Bradley model before. Uh, but I wanted to mention one other thing, and we've had this guest on before, and we're going to have him on again very soon. Dr. Al Larson, uh, who runs Money Tides out of uh, Colorado, outside of Denver, Thornton, Colorado. Uh, Al is um, uh, one of the smart. He probably he's got to be number two or uh, number two or number three of the four smartest people that I've ever met. And believe me, I've been in the public eye for a bit, and I've ran into some really, really smart people. The number one fellow that I met uh, many years ago, back in 1992, Dennis Reagan, who was the man who developed the uh, the Tomahawk war missile, warhead missile for the a missile for the Navy. Um, he could speak uh, eight languages, and uh, he, he he could do uh, math in his head faster than a calculator. Uh, but he was a savant, and he had some real limiting uh, social abilities, uh, but also um, the Arringtons, uh, Howard and John Arrington from uh, Ensign are certainly in the uh, genius category. Uh, I have a student in Birmingham, Alabama, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jimmy, who is certainly in that uh, category. He can read, you know, 10,000 words a minute and remember it and uh, has a photographic memory. So I met some of these people, but Dr. Al Larson is definitely up there at either one or two. And I say that because because he has double PhDs, uh, one in uh, computer science and the other is in uh, astrophysics. And uh, the thing that I talked about yesterday uh, on the show, and I posted it in the room to show the <clears throat> the effect of the lunar uh, energy that occurred around 1030 in the morning. Now, we, we posted that for two reasons. One is Shane Smolian from WolfTrader.net has always been telling us that this is when the Federal Reserve comes in and starts doing their some of their, um, shen not shenanigans, but um, not manipulations. What do you call them? Uh, whatever the Fed does. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's when they usually start. And that happened to be a really strong. Well, the market didn't top exactly 
at 10.30 on Friday. It, 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 it was about 10 minutes later, but that was still pretty accurate because the market didn't really go anywhere after 10.30. It went sideways. Now, does that work every day? Of course it doesn't, but it does have some really good you know, uh, timing things for short-term traders if you're using the S&P. If you wanted to contact Dr. Al, it's www.moneytides.com. He's been doing this for a very, very long time. I've known him um, just about 40 years and have become, uh, you know, pretty good friends with him. And so I'm going to have him back on the show. One other thing, he has written a book called Your Electric Life. You can get that on Kindle for $6. But this is a book that you really should try to get. And uh, because the reason the reason is it describes what's happening with the uh, overall picture of the energy that goes on with these planetary things. And I think that if you think about it just a little bit, considering where we are with the sun and everything else, that this has to be related to energy. How it relates to the stock market, I don't know. Uh, all I know is that you see these key dates hit right around these times, and so you've got to respect it, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, that's enough off of the soapbox. I wanted to talk a little bit here about the Treasury bonds. Uh, we've had a big move down here in bonds here. Uh, we hit just a little bit below the 163 level last night. We got down to 162.19. We've since rallied. Uh, folks, this market has been in a downtrend for well over two and a half weeks. Uh, and if you go back even farther, it's two and a half months. So it's due for a little bit of a rally. But frankly, if you look at this, you realize that interest rates have been going higher since the 5th of July. And uh, whether we, whatever the, the Federal Reserve is trying to tell us, the market is telling us that interest rates you know, are going higher. You know, that's uh, that's the bottom line of, uh, you know, what you're looking at when you're watching some of these things. So I think that it's necessary that we pay uh, particular attention to it. Now, if we take a look and we go across the pond over to uh, Germany, you'll see here uh, someone's mentioned that I did talk about a high in the bonds at the 177 level. That's just This is true, I did. But I also talked about the high at 172, 173, 174, 175, 176, and finally, 177. It reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from uh, Paul Tudor Jones. He was being interviewed by the Wall Street Journal, and the, the, the guy said, uh, he said, boy, he said, it must really be fantastic to be the man who picked the bottom in the bond market in 1986. And Jones said to him, he said, well, he said, that's uh, that's only part true. And he said, what do you mean? He said, the real quote should be, Paul Tudor Jones picked the exact bottom in the bond market in 1986 after failing in 1982, 1983, 1984, 1985. So this is all about probabilities, folks. So remember, when, when I say something or anybody else says something, it's, it's something that you have to prove to yourself. So don't... Uh, you know, don't don't bet any money on anything unless you do the actual uh, work yourself and take the responsibility for what you're looking at, and then you'll have something a lot better, you know, to fall back on other than someone else's word. Because even though we do a lot of research, remember it is all based on probabilities. Some of them work, some of them don't. The odds are in your favor. There's no question about that. But the problem is, you could go through a period of seven or eight times of being wrong before you finally you know, get it right. You can also go through a period of being almost infallible for, uh, you know, weeks at a time. But remember, always in the background, there's that man with the sickle wearing that big, uh, you know, hoodie, uh, singing that swickle, sickle back and forth as he goes through the wheat field looking for you. Because uh, if you don't protect yourself, you know, you're just waiting for that guy, you know, to uh, mow you down. That's the main thing. Let's get on to the uh, in on to the precious metals here because I think this is where we've got a chance here for a move in gold. Uh, I was hoping uh, for a slightly lower low in gold today. We still might get it, but uh, we did get down to that 1252 level. We haven't really done very much. But if we look at this uh, gold chart over the past year now, you remember we bottomed in December of uh, last year. Actually, it was early. Actually, the bottom was actually in mid-December. And we've been nine months now, or 10 months through 11. Well, wow, this is yeah, 10 months through this whole thing. And you'll notice that we've had these, uh, you'll see those dark red lines. Those were the big corrections. One was $150, okay, to the downside from the high. And the other one, of course, you see we have some equality there coming in at the 786 retracement and also the 382. So this 1242 
is a really, really key figure. So if we happen to take that 1242 out by just a little bit and don't go anywhere, that would really be a highly um, influential say that we could be moving. The other thing is, is if we get above the 1265 level today, uh, that would tell us that we're most probably have made this bottom down here at the 78% retracement and the 382 and will most probably be going higher. Now, whether this is going to uh, happen or not, you know, we have to, you know, just let one thing happen. Now, there is a, there's, if you'll take a look here at the platinum market, and this platinum market has been the, uh, the weaker of the three precious metals. And if you'll take a look at this, last week we had a perfect one, two, three, uh, drives to a bottom when when it hit the 12 uh, 962 level but as even gold and silver stayed in the same range platinum was making new lows it dropped another thirty dollars to the downside and now whether we're, we're going to see whether this is still going to give us some support or not but the support that we originally had you know at the 950 uh, 951 level has dissipated and so this could be an indication that we are moving lower 877-927-6648 Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, pretty soon my uh, my alerts are probably going to go crazy here because I've got a bunch of alerts set out today. 
uh, in some of these things, so I might have to uh, turn those off in a second, but so far nothing has happened. Um, what it, someone asked a question in the den about Paul Tudor Jones and the fact that he uses the previous day's lows and highs for uh, his stops, and that's because, you know, he was really risk-averse. Uh, you know, Paul Tudor Jones was from Memphis. Uh, he actually was very fortunate. His father was a uh, an attorney. His mother was a school teacher. But they happened to be friends with one of the uh, the great uh, commodity traders uh, of all time. <laughs> Just as I say that, hello, there it goes out into the stratosphere, up into the Akashic Records. I can't remember his name, but I'll remember it uh, in a second. His son is still a good friend of mine who's a... Uh, uh, oh, come on. Help me out here. Who was the guy from Memphis? The great guy. Eli, tell us. Thank you very much. Eli Jr. Uh, still lives in uh, New York and is a cotton trader to this day. But uh, he worked under Eli Tellis. T-E-L-L-I-S was the uh, cor a correct pronunciation of it. But uh, he he learned through him. And uh, one of the things that Tellis did was he, he would hold positions, uh, massive losses against himself because he believed – in you know the fundamentals of what he was doing, Paul Tudor Jones measured uh, you know actually brought fundamentals and also technical stuff together. But later on in his life, he became almost a, a, a technical trader. If you look at uh, the move, uh, you can go onto YouTube and pull out the uh, the movie. Uh, it's a little documentary called The Trader. Uh, it was published in 19. Uh, uh, 87 or 88. Uh, it was basically brought out to, it was, it was a little uh, movie that they sold for 50 bucks. It was a promotion for Tudor Investments, and it was to basically to uh, tell them that, uh, you know, what how good he was and everything. But after the thing was put out, uh, they immediately pulled it off the air. The, yes, it is hard to find. They pulled it off the air right away, and the reason for that was uh, was three things. One is the fact that he had some things in there about this uh, rhinoceros that was there, this white rhino, that they put it in his office, and they couldn't get it in the door, so they left it on the floor there until they could do the uh, renovation. And during that time, they had the greatest run in Tudor investments that they ever had, so he views he views that as a talisman, something lucky. And sure enough, uh, there were other things. The other thing is is that the, on Sunday night when he first started trading, he did something like uh, 20 million Deutschmarks uh, trading forex that night, and he was bragging about you know the fact that he made a hundred thousand dollars. If you did the math on on that, if you watched it, if you did the math, he had about two and a half million dollars at risk to make that. Uh, you know, two hundred or the hundred thousand dollars that he made. So there were a few other things in there. Oh, his lucky tennis shoes with uh, Bruce Willis. That was another one that uh, you know was a little bit uh, a little bit hard to realize. So just keep in mind that uh, you know everybody has their flaws, folks. So, uh, but believe me, he's been a, a wonderful attribute to all of finance, and he's a very very uh, philanthropic fellow uh, and uh, does a you know, a lot giving back to the thing through his Robin, Robin Hood Foundation. Uh, let's get back to the markets here. We're now opening. Uh, we're getting to be unchanged now on the day. We're right up at this area at this 2128 level that Vasil Chapman talked about this morning in the uh, Tiger's Den. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that because that's going to be a really interesting one, you know, to look at also because we're at these levels that should be, you know, pretty important, I would think. That's the, you know, what we're looking at now. Like I mentioned before, if we have one really, really strong day this week, uh, and it should be this week because this timing is, you know, we don't have any more time. We've, we passed the, uh, the full moon was uh, on uh, Sunday. Uh, we, we're past perigee. So all this stuff should be, you know, uh, on its way out. And the larger cycles that are there should be the one that would be uh, moving along. So these are the things that we want to keep in mind because these seem to be the ones that will lead us to the promised land. I have to stick with the Bradley model until we have a lot of strength. That By a lot of strength, I mean that the Dow Jones would get above 18,400. And then I would say, yes, uh, we're probably going to go up and attempt new highs. If you look at across the pond, you know, the um, the FTSE still looks okay. The, the DAX still looks okay. But if you go across Asia and look at Hang Seng, uh, it looks uh, extremely bearish. The the Nikkei is not too much behind it, but you know, remember that's basically a government market because uh, the the Japanese government basically buys whatever anybody puts out. So those are the the main things to uh, you know sort of keep in mind when you're looking at the overall thing. The the 
um, emerging markets, they still look very bearish. They're in very bearish Gartley patterns. I posted that into the newsletter last week, uh, the, the Chinese market, uh, and also the Hang Seng, and also the Nikkei and the emerging markets, and they they are still in a in a bearish mode. Specifically, the Hang Seng, the Hong, the Hong Kong market, looks more bearish than any of the others because we got down to this uh, 23,000 level very, very quickly after we hit 24,000, which was a 78% retracement. And that's uh, you know one of the things that we uh, we'll always watch of the four ratios that we that we look at, six one eight and seven eight six are contracting ratios, and one point two seven and one point six one eight are expanding ratios. So those are the uh, the key ratios that we're looking at. Let's switch over here to the uh, to the crude oil market. Here we'll take a quick look at it. Uh, we have a, uh, still have a possibility of crude making a 10% run up to the 56 level. But frankly, after this run that we've had during September, these last, uh, you know, three weeks, you know, the fact that we could just go back and only match those highs at the 52 level uh, tells us that we could be getting ready to see some lower prices in crude oil. So my strategy is, is to try to sell some rallies uh, until we get above that 52, and then you'd have to change that. But right now, I believe that you know we're just basically in this really long consolidation that started in June from 52 down to 40. Uh, we actually got to 39.20, but um, there we're right in the higher end of that range right now. So we'll see. Uh, I had a question over the weekend that I didn't know how to answer, but I talked to one of my colleagues, Byron Tucker, uh, in New York, and how is the election going to uh, affect uh, you know what these markets are going to do and by golly he came up with the exact correct answer and that is he says it's going to fluctuate <laughs> he was he was being sarcastic but that's probably what's going to happen we're probably going to see a whole lot of uh, ups and downs you know during this time but remember uh, you know what what uh, the Republican candidate did was you know he said he was going to get rid of the Federal Reserve chairman because she had done a bad job well she's there to protect her job remember the Federal Reserve is a private bank folks this is not a governmental bank just because it's on Pennsylvania Avenue you know it looks really really uh, prestigious there it's a private bank don't ever delude yourself uh, if you don't believe that go read the book you know the creek the creature from Jekyll Island because that'll tell you you know pretty much uh, what you're looking at if you ever read any of the works of um, uh, John Kennedy's father Joseph Kennedy you know he made his fortune by being close to the Federal Reserve during the the uh, 20s and 30s because he would get the information ahead of time and that's how he you know put his uh, uh, financial house in such strong uh, position. So that's pretty much what we're looking at. One other thing we have to look at, and this is one that I think we're making a major bottom here uh, in the hog market. But again, we have to be really careful here because if we get much below 39, these hogs could go anywhere. 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. 
Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon, five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex. Up next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and I think we have to take our hats off to Basil Chapman today. He said there was going to be resistance in the S&P at 21.27, uh, 28, and bada bing, bada boom. That's been the high, 21.29. So this is one of the advantages of coming into the Tiger uh, family and uh, come into the den. And it got some really smart people in there, folks. Uh, and we have some guests that come in uh, that give some good information across the board, too. But let's take a quick look uh, at the... Uh, IWM, which is the ETF for the Russell 2000. As you can see here, uh, we are looking at a market that is weaker than the rest of the market, and it had been one of the stronger components, you know, ever since we made those lows in February. Uh, we went up and made a, uh, you'll look at those uh, markings that I have, the one, two, three, four, five. That's the expanding triangle that we're looking at. What's really amazing when you do these patterns is you'll notice that the similarity that we see as far as how the highs, you know, fall along a trend line to the upside and the lows follow a trend line to the downside. So it does have this beautiful symmetry and geometry. And you can't make this stuff up, folks. I mean, you're seeing it on everything. You see it on ETFs, foreign currencies, gold, crude oil, soybeans, wheat, corn. All of these things are doing pretty much the exact same thing. So keep in mind that this is uh, this stuff does work. It doesn't work all the time, but uh, it works a lot more than it, than it doesn't. Now, what this is telling us is the fact that we went down and we matched the lows from early September in the IWM. And with a little bit of weakness today, we're going to be taking out of those lows and we'll see that this is what uh, what we're looking at uh, at this particular time. Uh, someone's asked a question about the bonds. Yes, we are having a pretty good bounce today. That 163 level was very, very important. It was a 127 uh, retracement expansion to the downside, and uh, it also gives a little chance of a little bit of rally. But longer term, folks, these interest rates look like they certainly want to uh, – they certainly want to go higher. The one chart of the interest rate group that is really the most troubling to me is if you look at the relationship, folks, to the uh, junk bond market, you know, the high yield bonds, to the uh, the uh, yield on the on the bonds. If you look at the uh, the red line, the red line is the price of the uh, the bonds themselves. That's that's I have this mismarked. The red lines are not bond yields. It's actually the price of the of the bonds going down because as bonds go down the yields the yields go uh the yields go up that means interest rates are going higher but we have higher interest rates but you'll notice that the junk bonds have been rallying against this time which is an unusual phenomenon it's setting right at a 50 percent retracement from last year's high 
and it's made a three drive to a top pattern too. So I was one thing that I would be looking at would be if you have junk bonds, just be very careful in here because this has been in a, a really strong bear market for several years. And we just had one of our most uh, prominent rallies since February. So this should be uh, coming to an end also. But the charts are telling us that interest rates look like they do want to go higher. That's what it looks like. Now, whether they're going to do that or not, you know, no one really knows the answer to that. And I'm just another technician. So I'm just looking at the charts and they're saying, yeah, it looks like that's what it wants to do. So we have to assume that this is what uh, this is what's going on. Now, I had a request to uh, revisit one of the stocks. Uh, oh, I know what I wanted to mention before I do that. Uh, before I get to Apple, I wanted to show you the Hang Seng because this is interesting what what occurred here uh, last night. This is the Hang Seng over the past several weeks. This is a daily chart. You'll see that we made a really nice Gartley pattern up there at the 24,000 level. You'll notice the huge gap down we had on uh, September the 8th. Uh, that's when there was some type of uh, economic thing that shook up the markets. We went back up and filled the gaps, made a beautiful Gartley pattern up there. And now we're trading below 23,000. This is a... Uh, this is not a good sign for, for a bullish pattern that tells us that we're most probably, you know, heading down. And this market has been going down since 2012, I believe. So this is another one that tells us that we're looking ahead, uh, you know, during the things. So someone is saying here that the Fed speaks today. Uh, Fisher, uh, Stanley Fisher is speaking at 12.15 Eastern time. And uh, so just be careful if you're in the bonds, either long or short, always be careful. Because if you don't use a stop, you're telling the market that I know more than you do, Mr. Market, so I don't really need to use a stop. And that's not a good thing, boys and girls. As remember when you used to watch Mr. Rogers, you have to be careful. Always be afraid of strangers. And the Fed people are strangers. You have to remember that. Okay, let's move on to uh, the uh, price of uh, Apple. Let's just get this up here. We've had several requests. Uh, Friday, I didn't get a chance to get into it because we had uh, Shane on for our, as our guest. And we'll take a look here at Apple. Uh, we're trading in Apple up in this 117 and change level. Uh, there are two major ratios coming together there. Uh, it's a 78% retracement of the October high that was 123. It's also a 61% retracement of the high that we made last uh, April uh, on April the 17th. Uh, was also a 61% uh, retracement. So there should be some pretty strong resistance up here uh, in the uh, Apple at this 117, 118 level. Anything above 120, and it's off to the races, uh, the ABCD structure on that would take it up to 128. So if we do start seeing strength in these markets, then this would be the thing that you'd be watching as far as you know, whether how much strength is going to continue and we'll, we'll go from that level. So that's it. Right now we've got crude oil is getting hit today. We're down about a dollar from where we rallied to just a little while ago. Uh, that was nothing more than a 61% retracement on the uh, daily range looking at the 30-minute chart. That came in at uh, 5060. Uh, the high was 5057. So that was pretty much spot on to a perfect 61% uh, retracement. The ABCD structure on the crude oil and this one takes us just a little bit below the uh, $49 a barrel level right around the 48.50 so we should have pretty good support in crude oil at about a buck and a half uh, lower than than where we are uh, at the present time so watch this very very closely because it's going to be interesting to see if these things are going to uh, you know to be uh, holding up like we think <laughs> someone's asked me a question about the gold no i haven't bought it yet i i, I want to buy it my fingers on the the little fat button here on my uh my computer but i haven't bought it yet and i i really want to be long gold and silver in here mainly because of those daily patterns are looking really really positive what i want to do is i want to see if it's going to take out the lows one more time now, i I have a tendency to not buy break. Well, have, that's the understatement of the year. I don't buy breakouts. Uh, well, let's say let's 99% of the time I don't buy a breakout. If I ever buy a breakout, you better follow me because I I hardly ever do that, and I'd have to be really convinced the market was going to be moving in that direction. But even then, you could be wrong. So who knows? Uh, it just had a, a, an interesting memory just came to my mind uh, when Mark Douglas was writing his book, uh, trading in the zone here in the office. 
those uh, uh, several years while he lived here in Tucson, uh, he always tried to get me to reverse my positions whenever I was stopped out of something. Like if I was long gold and it went below where I was looking to do it. He said, why don't you, he said, just reverse at those times. He said, because he said, look at the probabilities of how they work. Well, I tried it and physiologically my brain does not handle it. So I just move on to the next pattern. That's really what we have. Oh, we got a caller from uh, Lakeland, Florida, I believe. Mike, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, but it's California. Oh, stay oh it's California. Okay. Stay with us for just a second. Sure, we'll be no right problem. back. We got to pay a few bills. You bet. My name is Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability and host of the Trader's Ed Show heard daily here at TFNN.com. On Wednesday, October 19th at 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a special one-hour event, Trading Range Boundary Lines, where I'll teach subscribers how to identify hidden support and resistance levels, the kind that you definitely need to be aware of for your trading and investing. You'll learn how to plot major horizontal support and resistance, how to identify breakouts and breakdowns, and how to project the next price move. These support and resistance levels work for stocks, ETFs, futures contracts, Currencies and these patterns work on every time frame. By signing up for Mastering Probability right now, you get the first month of my newsletter service for only $49, and that includes October 19th's Trading Range Boundary Webinar. Plus, if you sign up now, I'll include access to my three one hour workshops, the ultimate trading signals, the ultimate reversal signals, and the long short line that every trader needs to know. This is an investment you won't regret. For all the details of the upcoming workshop and reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com now. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with... Uh... Yeah, Mike in Lakewood, California. Hello.
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.